Faster internet than ever before has just arrived. Here's what you need to know. The world record for internet speed has been broken by engineers at Japan's National Institute of Information and Communications Technology, according to a press release by the Institute. The engineers demonstrated a data transmission rate of 319 terabits per second using optical fibers running over 3,000 kilometers or 1,864 miles. Those speeds are almost twice the previous record, set just a year ago, according to New Atlas. According to Science Alert, the system works by transmitting data using technology called wavelength division multiplexing. First, light signals are beamed from a laser that splits them into 552 channels. These signals are then sent down the four optical fiber cores, where the previous record used three. As the signals travel through these cores, at intervals of 70 kilometers or 43.5 miles, amplifiers doped with the rare earth elements thulium and erbium reduce transmission loss. Signals are sent then into another segment of optical fiber before the entire process repeats itself. The four optical fiber cores are the same diameter as a conventional single core fiber, including the protective cladding around it, which means the new method could easily be compatible with existing infrastructure, though the press release did not outline a timeline for any consumer application. Next steps that were for the project include continuing to develop wide-band, long-distance transmission systems and exploring further methods of increasing the transmission capacity of low-core count multi-core fibers and other novel space division multiplexing fibers. Additionally, the engineers say they will work to increase the transmission range of the technology to transoceanic distances. It may be a while, then, before we see the impact of this technology directly, but when we do, its impact could be massive. The BBC reported that a previous record set by Australian engineers last year, which reached 44.2 terabits per second, was able to download more than 1,000 HD movies in under a second. At over seven times the power of that effort, this Japanese engineering team could be about to watch a lot of low-quality Netflix filler. Technology site Interesting Engineering summed up the potential of the new technology. We're nearing an age where the internet of the 20-teens and early 2020s will look barbaric by comparison. In terms of signal speed and data transfer, it's an exciting time to be alive. That last part might be a little bit over the top, guys, but you get the general idea. They're excited. Of course, for now, we're still at the stage of internet development where we can experience huge blackouts out of nowhere. Thousands of websites, including Reddit, Amazon, PayPal, Spotify, and the British government's official site, went down across the world on Tuesday, after content delivery network provider Fastly suffered a disruption, according to a Reuters report. Over 45 minutes, users trying to access many high-traffic sites received an error message, according to The Guardian, though users in some places reported no problems throughout the outage. Content delivery networks are the internet's middlemen. Instead of visitors to a website having to connect directly to servers run by that company, which might be far away, companies like Fastly run server farms around the globe that carry copies of websites, thus speeding up the connection process. Of course, if one of those content delivery networks goes down, then you have what is technically called the absolute nightmare scenario of having no access to the group of websites they provide access to. And this is more important than simply restricting our access on Reddit. Media measurement firm Kantar calculated that, worldwide, websites lost more than $29 million in ad revenue per hour during the outage, according to Reuters. What's more, The Guardian reports users in the UK who were denied access to the British government's website were unable to use important services, including making COVID-19 vaccination bookings. The outage highlights a vulnerability in the increasingly centralized structure of internet provider infrastructure. According to The Guardian, only a small number of content delivery networks serve the entire world, with each one running huge numbers of websites. Outages are rare, but when they occur, even websites like the British government's, which can run on a backup network, need time to switch over manually. Despite some rumors, this outage isn't thought to have been caused by hackers, unlike some other recent disruptions. When you think of computer hacking, you think of code on a screen, internet banking, and email scams. What you don't think of is a large fuel pipeline. And yet this weekend, hackers targeted exactly that. Here's what you need to know. The hack on a 5,500 mile pipeline on the US East Coast is being looked at as one of the most significant attacks on key national infrastructure in history, according to the BBC. 
The Colonial Pipeline, which according to CNET, serves fuel to seven airports and 14 states, was forced to shut down on Saturday after hackers broke into its computer systems in order to hold the company to ransom. Colonial is working with shippers to deliver fuel, according to CNET. However, the Associated Press says more than 1,000 gas stations in the southeast have reported running dry due to panic buying, with states of emergency declared in both Florida and Virginia. It is possible hackers could have gained access to Colonial's computer network simply using an email to an employee, according to cyber expert John Nichols from Checkpoint, who was cited by the BBC. The FBI has identified the hacker group Darkseid as the group behind the attack, and describing Darkseid's sophisticated operation, Cyber Reason reports that they use a help desk to negotiate with the targets of their attacks and have their own affiliate program. CNET reports that these types of cyber attacks have become common. City governments around the U.S., including Baltimore's and Atlanta's, have been hit by ransomware attacks in the past, and hospitals have been forced to shut down. U.S. President Joe Biden has said he is being personally briefed on the situation. Responding to the large-scale political repercussions of its hack, Russia-based Darkseid has already attempted to backtrack. According to the BBC, it said on its website, Our goal is to make money and not creating problems for society. We do not participate in geopolitics, it added. We've all been there, haven't we? You've hacked into the biggest pipeline in the US and you suddenly realize the American government might come after you, so what do you do? Tell everyone you didn't mean it. It was just about stealing millions of dollars. No big deal, nothing to see here, and hope it all goes away. To be honest, it seems like these guys are good at computers, but not great at life. A U.S. government website was targeted by a group of Iranian hackers on Saturday, January 4th, amid ongoing tensions between Iran and the U.S. over the killing of Qasem Soleimani, a high-ranking Iranian commander. According to AFP, the Federal Depository Library Program's website was replaced with a page called Iranian Hackers. As soon as the site was opened, visitors were shown a picture of U.S. President Donald Trump bleeding through the mouth and being punched in the face by what seems to be the fist of an Iranian Revolutionary Guard. The website also showcased images of Iran's leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, the flag of Iran, and a message from the country's leader which expresses support for the oppressed people in the Middle East. In a statement, a spokesperson from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency told CNN that the site has since been taken offline and is no longer accessible. The official said that there's no confirmation of whether or not the hacking operation was part of Iran's state-sponsored activities. CNN reports Soleimani was killed on January 3rd by a U.S. airstrike ordered by President Trump after the U.S. Department of Defense accused him of developing plans to attack American military personnel and diplomats in Iraq and the Middle Eastern region. The Pentagon also says he was responsible for the deaths of hundreds of Americans and wounding thousands more. Twenty years ago, if someone suggested that their water heater was spying on them, you would have had to ask them if they needed some time off work. These days, they're probably right, especially if they've got one particular type of TV. Here's how that works. A Chinese analytics company has been collecting personal data from Skyworth brand smart TVs without users' consent, scanning their Wi-Fi every 10 minutes and uploading information according to protocol. The practice was revealed by a user who noticed their TV was being slow and analyzed back-end program code to find out why. What they found was a program by Beijing-based Gozen Data. According to the user, the program not only tracked activity on Skyworth smart TVs, it also tracked smart device activity near the TVs. A Skyworth spokesperson in Hong Kong told Apple Daily that it denied intruding on people's privacy, saying instead that it collected user data to facilitate personalized advertising. Protocol reports statements on Gozen's website that say its data collection service covers 149 million households, 140 million smart TVs, and 457 million people in China. Smart devices are increasingly prevalent in homes across China, and Protocol reports Weibo users shared concerns over security, noting how everything from stoves to kitchen hoods to water heaters is now linking up to the internet. Although the story arrives as the Chinese government has introduced new regulations protecting personal data and limiting its collection via mobile apps, according to the South China Morning Post, many will be familiar with China's existing privacy issues. China has eight of the world's ten most surveilled cities based on the number of cameras per 1,000 people, according to UK-based research firm Comparatech, cited by CNN. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.